This is one of Japan's most famous inventions, the bullet train. Japan's Super Express, the Shinkansen. But if you think these can go quick, you ain't seen nothing yet. For the past decade, Japan's been hard at work on the next evolution of these bullet trains, maglev. Short for magnetic levitation, these new trains do away with wheels and levitate down specially made tracks at speeds that can reach 603 kilometers an hour. That's much faster than the current bullet trains, which move at around 210 to 320 kilometers an hour. The trip between Tokyo and Nagoya will take only 40 minutes. That's faster than flying between the two cities, or taking the current one and a half hour trip on the Tokaido line. The route was supposed to open in 2027, just two years' time, but that's not so likely to happen anymore. It's all been pushed back until at least 2034, and all because of one man, Shizuoka Governor Haita Kawakatsu. This politician has successfully protested against the trains and delayed them by decades. But why would anyone be against Maglev? And now that Kawakatsu has been ousted from office, are things finally getting back on track? The first Shinkansen trains opened in 1964 and transformed travel from Tokyo to Osaka, taking it down from seven hours to just two and a half. Now, that journey could be slashed again down to just 67 minutes thanks to advancements in magnetic levitation or maglev. It's part of two new lines that Japan is building, the first from Tokyo to Nagoya, then from Nagoya to Osaka. Part of what'll make these lines so impossibly fast is that they use that magnetic levitation technology. It's actually pretty old, but has been updated for the 21st century. When this project is complete, it'll have the power to drastically transform Japan again. You see, this isn't the first time that Japan's course has been altered by super-fast trains. When the first bullet train debuted in 1964, the Tokaido Shinkansen, the rest of the world was focused on the booming aviation industry. Locomotives seemed like a relic from the past. And yet, Japan doubled down. In 1964, the Shinkansen operated at a top speed of 210 kilometers an hour, far outpacing traditional trains, which moved at speeds below 150 kilometers an hour. These new vehicles had a sleek, streamlined shape which minimized air resistance. It made for faster and more stable travel. Unlike more traditional trains with a single locomotive, Shinkansen were powered by multiple electric motors. Japan put their special new trains on their own dedicated tracks designed for high-speed travel. That meant they wouldn't be stuck behind slower passenger and freight trains. The high-speed tracks were engineered with minimal curves or gradients. That enabled faster speeds to be maintained without the need for frequent deceleration. This route to Tokyo carries countless workers and business people, growing the metropolis into a hub for tech and business. For the last few decades, tech gurus and entrepreneurs have been building massive generational wealth, not just in Tokyo, but across all of Asia. A lot of that wealth has been funneled into a non-traditional asset class, fine art. Hong Kong auction houses have even surpassed London, ranking second in the world. Not only that, but for the last 30 years, the post-war and contemporary art asset class has demonstrated price appreciation that's outpaced more traditional assets like stocks or real estate. That's why you should check out today's video sponsor, Masterworks. Masterworks's art investing platform already has over a billion dollars of invested capital from more than 60,000 active investors, with previous art offerings from legends like Picasso, Basquiat, and Banksy. But you don't need to be a billionaire or an art expert to get involved. In fact, many of the B1M subscribers have already signed up so far. You can get priority access with the QR code on screen, the link in the description, or by heading to masterworks.art forward slash B1M. Now, let's get back to Japan and discover how its gamble on infrastructure really did pay off. The Tokaido Shinkansen slashed travel times between major cities. 
The journey from Tokyo to Osaka, for example, went from six hours to just four. For the first time in Japan's history, rural areas and urban centers could easily trade goods, services, and labor like never before. That in turn created thousands of jobs and spurred even more infrastructure developments. Companies could access larger markets, and the country expanded and rebounded from World War II in what was later dubbed the Japanese Economic Miracle. Starting with that 515km Tokaido Shinkansen in 1964, the network expanded to consist of 2,951 kilometers of lines, with maximum speeds of 260 to even 320 km an hour. Japan has exported its technology across the globe and is rightly considered a leader in high-speed rail. Europe, and to some extent America, are trying to follow in the country's footsteps, using rail to reinvigorate their economies. Just across the sea from Japan, China has also emerged as another world leader in high-speed rail, with the largest network on the planet. But it was Japan that was ahead of the curve. Today, its bullet trains are considered part of the best high-speed rail network in the world. An accolade it earns thanks to a combination of unparalleled technological innovation, safety, efficiency, reliability, and great passenger experience. It comes as no surprise, then, that the rest of the world is eagerly awaiting the next big innovation in Japanese transportation. And the country has some very big ideas. Enter Maglev. Now, the concept for maglev trains has actually been around since the 1960s. But what Japan has done is modernize it with superconducting magnets. And they do two things. Lift the train carriage off the rails and propel it forward. But let's look at how that works in a little bit more detail. Maglev technology relies on magnetic forces to lift, propel and guide the train. It uses the two fundamentals of magnets that we all know. The fact that the same poles repel each other, and opposite poles will attract each other. At full speed, the Chu Shinkansen trains will move at 500 km an hour, although a 2015 test run saw they could reach a world record speed of 603 km an hour. Now, it's pretty widely agreed that those kinds of speeds are basically impossible for a conventional bullet train to hit, and that's because of the friction that's created by their wheels. To solve that problem, Japanese engineers actually looked back in time to a technology that's been around since the early 1900s, magnetic levitation. The Central Japan Railway Company has modernized this tech using superconducting magnets. Basically, electromagnets are cooled to minus 269 degrees Celsius, allowing trains to levitate higher above the tracks. But the trains need to be moving at speed before these magnets come in. So once the train reaches 150 km an hour using conventional methods, maglev kicks in and the carriage is lifted off its rubber wheels. The train then interacts with a set of coils in the track, one used to levitate its mass and the other to propel it forward. Now, without the wheel, the carriages can travel at incredible speeds. The trains are also completely autonomous, controlled by the track rather than the driver, a measure that it's claimed will hopefully make collisions or accidents far less likely. There are other benefits too. Because there are no wheels, these trains can run in almost any weather condition, and it costs less to maintain them. Like the original Shinkansen bullet trains of the 1960s, these maglev trains actually need their own specially built rail lines to minimize turns and to avoid any slower, older trains that may be in front of them. And those new lines don't come cheap. The total cost of the new maglev routes is going to end up at more than 64 billion US dollars. Now, back in 2009, maglev was approved and began construction. Everything was on track for the 2027 opening. But of course, that's now not going to happen. The first line is not expected to open until at least 2034, and that second route to Osaka isn't going to happen before 2037. That's an enormous, decade-long delay, and it's all because of this small section. Of the entire 287km maglev route, just 9km runs through the northern region of the Shizuoka prefecture. Here, the tunnels are going to dig under the southern Japanese Alps. Now, Shizuoka Governor Haita Kawakatsu has long protested this part of the line for a number of reasons. But his primary issue is to do with this river, the Oi, and it's very important. 
Not only does it play a key role in the region's culture and history, defining borders and establishing cities from centuries ago, but it's also a vital water source for the prefecture's agricultural activities, primarily the production of tea. The region kicks out an incredible 25,200 tonnes of tea, which accounts for about 36% of Japan's total output, making it the tea capital of the country. But the competition is stiff. There are fears that the construction of these tunnels will alter the volume of water flowing into the Oi River and affect tea production. The river also flows through several hydro-energy producing dams. If the amount of water in the river is lowered, it could affect the region's energy supply. Basically, tinkering with this river could have pretty disastrous consequences for this region across the board. Now, the Central Japan Railway Company promised to pump water back into the river, but their own reports speculate it would still lose about 2 metric tons per second. On top of this, Shizuoka is one of the few prefectures that doesn't really stand to gain anything from the new maglev lines. It's the only prefecture along the route without a station, and with the region already suffering from over-tourism, they hardly want more people coming to visit. The government is currently trying to add access fees to their Mount Fuji trailheads in an attempt to curb numbers which have become unsustainable. In March 2024, JR Central said they wouldn't be able to meet their 2027 deadline because this part of the railway was being held up. That had knock-on effects for the rest of the line and made it unclear when the second phase would open. JR Central and Kawakatsu basically found themselves at a stalemate. At least until a few days later in April 2024. Kawakatsu was recorded praising his staff for being smarter than people who sell vegetables or raise cows. That's not a wise thing to say when your constituency is famed for its agricultural output and you've made it part of your political brand to stand on the side of farmers. Kawakatsu's downfall was swift. Just one day later, he was forced to resign because of the enormous public outrage. In September, the new government granted JR Central permission to conduct a boring survey in preparation for the construction of the tunnel, a dramatic change in position. But while this is a sign that construction could commence soon, the delays are far from over. Other parts of the line have faced their own issues. Soft ground in the Aichi Prefecture has delayed the completion of a tunnel by more than five years to the end of January 2030, again having further knock-on effects. All told, there really is too much at stake for this line not to happen. But it's a reminder that so many mega-projects can face delays. The rest of the world is waiting with anticipation to see how Japan might pull this off, and whether they too could adapt this for their own nations. China has even announced its own maglev line in Hunan province. It would be their first intercity route and could ignite a maglev race between the two countries. Until then, the maglev-enabled future may be some decades away. For now, a simple bullet train will have to suffice. This video was sponsored by Masterworks. You can learn more about that at the link below. Don't forget that we're inspiring the next generation of builders through our investment into BrickBorrow, a fantastic LEGO subscription service. You can learn more and get started today over at BrickBorrow.com. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, from the channel that takes you into the heart of Japan, hit that subscribe button.